Alrighty, fantastic. You are still hanging out with us right here on Y254 channel. And today being a Tuesday, we talk matters entrepreneurship. And like I said, continue to interact with us on our social media. That's on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter is at Y254 channel. You can find us on Instagram. There's an underscore by there so that you don't get the wrong Instagram handle and say, oh, Sakwa told me it is a no. There's an underscore there. And you can also interact with me at Brian Sakwa 101. I see it's at the bottom of your screen. And the hashtag is still why in the morning the conversation about matters entrepreneurship and financial literacy continues now joining me in studio are two powerful people a lady and a gentleman they're going to talk to tell us more insights they're going to give us perspective when it comes to matters financial literacy and wealth creation by the way you could be back at home and thinking me me i just want to be rich I will do anything crazy to be rich. And then somebody will say, hey, you want to be rich, you'll be mad dad. So what are some of the myths and misconceptions when it comes to actually matters health and for, um, wealth, that is, and financial literacy? And joining me right in studio, right about now live, next to me, she is uh, Veronica Okola. And then I don't want to butcher his name. I let him fast, uh, I let him pronounce his name uh, personally, but let's have uh, Veronica introduce yourself. Welcome, first of all, and good morning. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, my name is Veronica, just as you have been told. I'm a financial advisor, and uh, I have also a banking background. Right. Yeah. So Kidogo Kidogo can pop up at a bank anytime soon and say, hold up, his name is Veronica. <laughs> yeah, <Right>. sure. <laughs> Welcome. Now to the name I don't want to butcher. Please, I don't want to murder this name. <laughs> Please introduce yourself, sir. My name is Amadou Chiko Sisoko. Right. I'm originally from Guinea. Right. Uh, I'm a business coach, a leadership trainer, right. and an entrepreneur. Right. And I love the fact that, you know, you mentioned leadership in there because leadership and finances, they're like twin, twi twin sister. They say, hey, you are a member of parliament who is broke. Where is your money? And I love the fact that, you know, we're talking about financial literacy and wealth creation. Now, uh, before we get into that, just a little bit background of some of the things you've done that have actually put you in line into this kind of course that you've taken before I come back to Veronica. Yeah, so I, I dropped out of three universities. You dropped out of three universities? Yes, yes, yes. I dropped out of uh, uh, medical school, uh, engineering, and business school. And I wanted to be a writer. So I wrote my first manuscript in my early 20s. Uh, I failed to get it you know, published. So I went through a lot of different failures and a lot of different initiatives that I tried that didn't work out. And then the first one that actually worked was an agro-tourism retreat in Guinea. So I built the country's first agro-tourism retreat. And that was a you know, fairly successful initiative as a young person, which allowed me then to inspire other young people that indeed, even if you've gone through failures, if you persist and you keep your focus, you're gonna make it sooner right. or later. True, yeah. So that's how I got involved in training entrepreneurship. We created Guinea's first uh, social entrepreneurship movement. We funded the first generation of social entrepreneurs. We brought them together, gave them the knowledge, found the finances for them to start their businesses. Um, and then, you know, from there I was uh, awarded the Mandela Washington Fellowship by the former President Obama in 2014. Right. Uh, Congratulations. Got to, huh? yeah, yeah, I got to see that the problem is the same all over the continent. You have brilliant young people, big dreams. We all have dreams. Your family doesn't believe in you. Your friends don't believe in you. So you go into depression and right. you don't know how to make it. So I, th I, I said I wanted my life to be a source of inspiration. So I had to achieve every goal I set for myself. So that's what led me to you know, come to Kenya, want to help the country achieve the vision 2030, right. then got involved in training in all the hubs of innovation and entrepreneurship here. I've trained you know, tens of thousands of the best young entrepreneurs across Africa, coached them, inspired them to go after big dreams, you know, make big things happen in their lives. Right. And it's exciting because I have a lot of faith in, in us as Africans. You know, as young Africans, I think that we're going to dominate the world. Right. Right. So how are we going to get there? We have to start, you know, moving. We have to start believing in ourselves. We have to start, you know, going after our dreams. Right. And I love the fact that you talk about with so much power, confidence, and gusto. Uh, on your description, you talked about, uh, you described your purpose is not your own. It is your opportunity to serve others, inspire them, or improve them in some way shape or form before i get back to veronica how important is it even to realize 
your purpose when it comes to even matters leadership because yep. we are talking about matters uh, financial literacy and wealth but you know you could be very rich but feeling empty as Definitely. well right i think purpose is the most important thing in someone's life in anybody's life and the sooner you find your purpose the more fulfilled your life will be and how do you find your purpose and why i say that it's always linked to the things that you've gone through but that serve as your tools for humanity right what are you uniquely gifted to offer to the world? That's your purpose. But you cannot discover that without going through things, without having gone through different experiences in your life. So everyone deserves the father and mother that they have. Even if you have a mother who's a drunkard, a father who's an alcoholic, a criminal, that's the environment that you were supposed to be born in for you to become the person that you're supposed to be. Right. So you should never underestimate where you come from because those are the experiences that build you up into who you're supposed to be. Right. Now, once you identify that, you want to now align everything you do in that direction. So I grew up with my aunt. My parents sent me to live with my aunt. Right. She was abusive. She was insulting. She was demeaning. She used to like break me down, literally, as a child. But that's what gave me the resilience I have today. Right. It's because of that that I set out to say, I want to help leaders be better leaders right. so that they can lead the people who follow them. Right. Because if she was a better leader, if she had been a better, if she had been mentored, if she right. had been coached right. to lead better, she would have led me better. Right. right? Yeah. So the purpose, I think, is the most important. Every time you see people are lost in their lives, it's that desire to find purpose. Yeah. And because most of our parents are not equipped you know, to help you find your purpose. That's why it's difficult right. for you to relate even at home. Right. So it's like really finding out what is that one thing. If you were a tool that God was using in the universe, what are you uniquely gifted, gifted to accomplish? Yeah. And, and also how do you do that for, people. for the most? Right. Yeah, exactly. And I love the fact that it's touching on other people. Now, let's throw it back to you, Veronica. Yeah. You are a financial advisor. Yeah. And uh, just to make you aware, she is his student as well. And I just wanted to tell us a little bit of background. How, how did you start uh, to interact with Amadu and how did you start working together? And you have a background in banking as well. Well, okay. Uh, when I was interacting with, the first time I met Amadu was through Yali. I'm right. an alumni of Yali Court 40. All right, awesome. Huh? Yeah. So, Lika, I was looking, I was actually looking for funding to boost my business. I am Lika a small restaurant shop for fast foods. And so like, uh, when I received a call from him, like, I, I felt like I, ha I received the grace from God. Right, like, wow. yeah. So uh -huh. like, we started engaging and I told him the challenges I was facing as within the shop, why I needed the $100,000. Wow. A thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Good amount so, of cash, right? Yeah, now. yeah. So, like, in the process of engaging, we realized we could work on something. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that's how you struck a rapport. Yeah, yeah. Right. And money is involved. Now, speaking of wealth and finances, how important is it, even from an experience of, you know, a ba uh, with a person with a, ba uh, a, a, a banking, you know, yeah. background, how important is it to actually know about money, especially in a generation where young people are all about, you know, having fun. We want to spend. We want to go out there. We want to post it on the gram, get lit, whatnot. How, or wh how important and why important is it to actually have financial literacy? Okay, now financial literacy, we normally say, for example, if I'm earning 30,000 monthly, now financial literacy entails me spending the 30,000 without going into debt. So I think these are some of the financial tools that we, the youths and even the adults lack. And in most cases, people normally think like, uh, people who like financial knowledge are only the uneducated population. Right, yeah. But like, uh, ideally, I think even the people who are educated and have more financial incomes are as well ignorant compared to, when it comes to financial knowledge compared to people who are not educated right. and unless. So right. I think there's a gap in our society on how I can manage my finances without going bankrupt, right. without like, yeah, even the, the mental that you aspect. Get. Yeah. And, and I love the fact that you know, it's touching on, on management because um, yeah. for us young people, we need to be taught the saving culture, you know. 
you have been given a hundred k, and yeah. within two three days, you you don't even have five bob. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, I think the servants' cultures should be taught as early as since you say hi, good morning, mom, I'm born. Now uh, back to your Madhu. Uh, when it comes to health, to to matters wealth, I remember we had a conversation behind the scenes, and uh, you shared with me that there's people who are afraid to actually be rich, yep. and I told if you're not rich, you want to accumulate wealth, and uh, and we shared, and I told you uh, there's a friend who was telling me that wealth is generational. Mm -hmm. Wealth can be inherited or wealth can be created from scratch. Yep. How do you get to that space where you, you have to like be at a position you're creating wealth, not only just for yourself, mm -hmm. but for generations to come, even in regards to the finances and many other assets as well? Yeah, very good question. I think you need to get angry, frustrated, uncomfortable with being poor, right? If you're a young person and you're always dependent on your parents, to provide for your basic needs, at some point, you need to get frustrated that you want it for yourself, right? If you're someone who comes from a family that is really, really poor, and you grew up in shame, you were kicked out of school, you, ha you had all these, ch you have to get angry and frustrated of your situation. You know, you have to say one day, this is enough, I don't want to live in this situation anymore, right? So that's one. Second also, you have to have the desire to be of value to society in ways that are limitless right. because that's the benefit of wealth is that you can see someone for example in the supermarket who's struggling to pay for their food and you won't think you just take out your card or take out your phone and pay for them that's wealth that that's that's the spirit of abundance right you can have that even if you don't have millions in your bank account it's a mindset but without that mindset you're never going to be financially you know abundant so when people say that you have to have a particular background or a particular pedigree or a particular last name for you to be wealthy, that's not true. Because all those last names were built. Like there was one person in that family that said, I'm done with being poor and I have to build something for myself, for my children and for my descendants. So I think that a young person today who's watching us, listening to us and has dreams in their mind has to understand that that dream has to be funded. And so they have to want to start looking for money. They have to start to want selling products. They have to start looking for jobs, internships, opportunities to earn. The sooner you start earning, the better you can learn how to manage. Right. Right? If you're already, like, already earning even an allowance from your parents and you can be able to manage that allowance between now and the next time you get it, why not earn a little bit more? Maybe take that allowance, go buy some stuff that you can sell to your friends. Right? Right. True. Yeah. So I, wanna, I encourage even my own children to start businesses. How I, many do you got, by the way, <laughs> since have, you mentioned I have three them. daughters and two sons. All right. Um, one of my daughters is an entrepreneur. She, she, she's very interested in fashion. She likes doing people's hair. I told her to charge. Okay. You know, did people like coming for them to get their hair done with her for free? I said, charge them. Right. You know, she wants to start a shop. I told her, write me a business plan, write it down on paper, take right. her through the questions. Because mm -hmm. the goal is to teach her what my parents didn't teach me. As early as possible. As early. I want her to be a millionaire by the time she's 18 or 19 or 20. Right. Right? Because yeah. by doing that, she becomes empowered financially. She's not dependent on me. She's not going to be dependent on a man. Right? right. And she can you know, make her own decisions. She right. can take her own risks. Right. So I encourage every young person to be a millionaire as soon as possible. Experience what it is to have money and then experience what it is to have money and not be happy so right. that you know that money doesn't make you happy. Not that and I love that you're saying it because <laughs> there's been endless conversations about, you know, people talking about when I have 10 million US dollars, I'll be happy and boiling. But when they get that 10 million dollars, they are so stressed and they wish sure. they never lived. So it, does money make somebody happy? Money does give you good experiences that you have to admit. I would tell everybody to make money. Everybody, <laughs> anybody. I've never seen. I've uh, never seen a poor person say uh, money is not important. Only rich people say, "Oh, it's not about the money." But they're lying. We're all thinking about the money all the time. Rich right? people stop lying. To it's us. true. Like <laughs> you need, you need to make money. Yeah. Right. In order yeah, for you true. to experience that, one, it does give you great experiences but also it doesn't give you long-lasting happiness, right? Right. Money doesn't take away loneliness. Emptiness. Money doesn't take away <laughs> emptiness. But 
Money does take you to a good spot where you can get a good massage. Money does take you to a good location spot where you can, you know, look at the ocean. And if you look at the ocean long enough, sometimes you forget those problems, right? So right, I exactly. always tell people, <laughs> let's let's not let's democratize this reality that there's no there's no there's no virtue in being poor. Okay? Right. There's no virtue in being poor because it's a mindset that that destroys you from within. Because right. it doesn't give you the confidence to go right. out there. But even if you're earning a hundred bob, like I see, oh, you have all these you know, young people, young ladies working in your studio. Even if you're earning a little bit, that, that dignity it gives you is better than when you have to ask someone. You get what I'm saying? So True. earning more money can only be better. And there's, there's, there's studies that prove that the more you advance in society, the longer you live. Right. Right. So the more achievements you get, yeah. the longer, Successes, the more yeah. you are, you know, alive, and the more you go. So me, I, I'll comes, tell you, yeah. everybody, everybody right. should be rich. Right. Everybody should, you know, find ethical, honest, transparent way of making money. Right. Not stealing, not cheating, not lying. But if you can start making money early, genuinely, genuinely, right. be financially independent, not depend on your parents, not depend. That's the best feeling you can have as a young person. Good, interesting. I love that you, you gave a very comprehensive outlook of that. And let me come back to you, Veronica. Okay. Uh, when it comes to finances with young people, and I love the fact that you're also still a young person, yeah. um, there's usually some, so, so the, like it's like, I don't know if it's lack of transparency or a lack of trust, where uh, your, your dad or your mom gives you, let's say, 100K, yeah. and they're saying, oh, this, this one is yours. Yeah. Uh, go and do a business or go and do something for yourself. But it ends up that you mismanage the finances and you have nothing at all for yourself. And you have to make that call like, hey, mom, it's me again. And for anybody who's watching back at home and they, they don't know how to actually manage their finances to stay in check, yeah. what would you tell them to do so that they stay afloat financially? Okay, I think the first thing that they really need to do is to have like a financial plan. Like a, maybe I have this idea, but I don't have the capital. So that's when I get the money, I know what I'm doing with it. But like, if what I'm thinking about it always is sherehe or going to party, going traveling and doing anything, the moment I get the money, I will go and share and come back. Right. I will not think about investing. Then without realizing it, I'll realize like the 100,000 is gone. I've done nothing with it. Right. Yeah, so I think as the youth, we need to plan ourselves. We need to have budget for everything that we we want to do we also need to have like a vision of what you want with our life what you want to accomplish right yes yeah speaking of vision you know uh, when it comes to matters money very important <laughs> matters to families as well and I love the fact that we are integrating we, we are integrating it with wealth yeah. how do you ensure that for example if it's inherited finances yeah. which is you know uh, a model would say still wealth because money is wealth I'll say <laughs> for example uh, somebody died yeah. And uh, their father left them maybe, let's say, uh, let's say 20 million. And they want to actually divide that into like the whole family and still ensure that they stay afloat financially and still continue creating that cycle of financial stability. How do they go about that? And I'd also like uh, Amadi to actually answer. Uh, I think like uh, talking of the vision, maybe these are uh, legacy of the family that the family was building or something. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. can continue the family legacy or you can also decide to pursue your own legacy or your own path. Because if you're dividing the money amongst your family members, what you want may not be what I want and may not be what I do want. Right. So like if I have my own vision, I have what I want to accomplish and they don't align together with what you want and what I do want. So like, uh, just have a vision and make sure like, you, you, you stick to the plan. Right. Yeah. Have a vision, stick to the plan. Yeah. Let me throw it back to you also, Amadu. So when, when you inherit money, it's money you're not expecting, right? Right. So it becomes like, you call it free money. You didn't work for it, right? It, it comes because of your last name, all that. Like you said, if you don't have a plan, Ideas will just come to you and you'll spend the money there. That's why don't become a millionaire. Don't, no, don't have a million without being a millionaire. Don't have a million without being a, a millionaire. millionaire. All right. You have to first be a millionaire in your head. In mind. In your mind. You have to have so a it's plan. it's a mindset. It's a mindset. <laughs> because wow. if, you, if, if I ask you right now, what is your plan for becoming a millionaire? 
Right. And you can show me a plan and say, okay, I have a food business. If I can open five food businesses and I generate this amount from each one, I'm going to be a millionaire. When I give you a million, you'll know what to do with it. Right. Because you already know that you've already, you already have a plan. Right. So every family should have a plan. Even when you're broke, have a plan for what you'll do when you're wealthy. Because you don't know if that money is going to come tomorrow, right? Right. Yeah? Because it's, it's already a belief. It's, it's already it's a, a belief, belief, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Faith it's comes coming. Through. Right. <laughs> so, so think of it that way. If, if you have a plan for a million dollars, you will attract opportunities and ideas to generate that million dollars. Right. But if you don't have a plan, or if you have a plan for clothes, that's what you're going to attract. You're going right. to attract more people and things that are going to you know, take your money away. Right. right. So first, every family, I believe, every family should have a vision for the family, like she said, a like legacy said, yeah. of right. what your last name will represent in this country, for example. Anyone who's watching, tell your parents, like, what, what does our last name, what, what will it represent in 20 years? Right. Right. What will our family look like? What do we want to be remembered for? What for, do we yeah. want to be known for as a family? As a family. And it's then a long-term vision. Yeah. Right. Then we set a plan right. so that if everyone is going to contribute a thousand a, a month, Right. To that plan, opportunities will bring now for you to get there. Actually, I don't, you attract them. You like don't you focus said. on the how. Never right. focus on, on the, the how, how of a goal. Right. Uh -huh. Focus on the end goal. So if you are going to achieve a goal, let's say, for example, you wanted to go into media. Right. If you focus so much on the number of followers and you know how you're going to get that job, you're going to be divergent. Right. Rather than focus on your purpose. You're going to be focused more on what other people expect you to do. To do right. But if you think about the impact that every single time you speak, it's going to have on the lives of other people. Right. Every single time you have the opportunity to share an idea, how it's going to transform someone else's life. You wake up every morning keeping that in mind. I'm going to go transform someone's life today. Like when we were coming, we we're sitting there. Our goal is that someone and everyone who watches is inspired to go and make wealth, you know, right. to go and build. a. F so you come with an intention to improve the lives of others. How? will be done by the universe, by God, and everything else. Because people are going to see what you're doing. They're going to feel the effect. Someone says, I like that guy. I want to work with that guy because of the spirit that he you know, shares in the world. Yeah. So in business, with money, it's the same thing. If you focus so much on how am I going to become a millionaire, rather than what am I going to do, do with the millions, right. the how is going to stress you a lot. Because right. you're going to look at where you are and see how far it is and how difficult it is. Yeah. But always focus on what's the impact you're going to make once you're a millionaire. Right. You know, how, how is you being a millionaire going to improve the lives of other people? Right. And then the rest will come. And speaking of that, uh, in your description, you say Amadou is on a mission to create one million dollar millionaires across Africa by 2030 through the Empreneur Africa. Empreneur, you say, is a learn as you earn financial education and management platform designed to empower Africa's most promising entrepreneurs with the financial knowledge, skills, and opportunities to build wealth on their mobile. That captured my attention, on their mobile phone. Yes. And then uh, just uh, rightly above it, you say, you have uh, worked with uh, tourists, peace corps, volunteers as well, individuals and families from more than 40 countries across the world to come visit your farm in rural Guinea. How did that actually pan out? Going from being a farmer to now uh, a <laughs> public speaker, <laughs> I right. think that's, uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, I was a failure. I was uh, a professional failure. My grandmother used to say that I went to university to get a degree on how to fail because everything I tried never worked, like nothing was working. I went to Europe, failed, couldn't get a degree, came back. So that agritourism retreat was a means of me coaching myself that you can succeed even after you failed multiple times, right? right? So being able to build that and then have people come from all over the world to come and visit rural Guinea was an accomplishment because I was selling the vision. I was telling people like, you know, farming is fun. Come and relax on my farm. And I was building the infrastructure with the local materials. So it was, it was, a, good, it was a good project because it, it really gave me that belief that no matter how many failures you've endured, if you persist at some point, you're going to achieve something, right. no matter what it is, right? right? And that could be the first step. Right. And then from there, my second vision was I wanted to be a world-class speaker. 
became... And speaking of that, you, you, you've, you've been on TED, you know? Yeah. TED Talk. Guys, have you ever heard of Welcome to My TED Talk? This guy <laughs> has been on TEDx. <laughs> so how did that happen as we sum it up? Same thing, um, you know, and, and it brings me to how I'm working with her today. With, with, you yeah, know, with a clear Veronica vision. Well. Right. Clear vision. I, I wanted to be a world-class speaker. I wanted to inspire millions of people to change their way of living. So I, I, I improved my public speaking skills. I, every opportunity I had to speak, I spoke. I became uh, an expert in my field of entrepreneurship. Everything you do, you have to want to be the best that you can be. And if you always want to improve, just if you're in camera, be the best like that every image I capture makes someone cry. You know, right. so you're so possessed about, obsessed about being the best in that, right? Every question I ask makes the, you know, the audience understand. Every, you know, person I advise that their, their finances increase. So for me, it was every soul I speak to that they're transformed. Transformation. Like without, like I don't need to speak to you for five minutes. In one minute, I should say one word and your life is transformed. You're changed mentally. And, <laughs> and everything came after that. How I met yeah. her, why it's important is because... When we launched the Empreneur, the goal was to help create millionaires, like all of you. How yeah. can you become wealthy before 2030? And not just millionaires, one million dollars. In dollars, as, as wealth, right. as wealth. Like, as wealth, it means when you take what you own and what you owe and you subtract, you have 100 million or 120 million Kenyan shillings in your bank account, right? That you can see from your phone. And so I, I shared with my network of alumni and she was one of the people who signed up. And I asked some information about what, what, are, what, are, what are they doing and how are they going towards you know, building their businesses. Right, yeah. Then when I had a chat with her, I asked her, okay, so where, where do you want to go? And she had a big goal big, big. Uh -huh. of what she wants to do and the impact she wants to make and the person she wants to be in society. Right. I said, this is exactly you know, what these you are, want, this yeah. is what we want to achieve. Right. So, and then now you also have the financial skills because you've worked with SMEs, organized trainings for them, helped them improve their finances. So on the journey to helping other young business owners, I want them to see young people like, like them who are working towards the same goal of being financially independent, right. but are willing to walk with them on that journey. So it's a journey. It's, it's a, a journey. It's a movement, together, right? right? It's we, a movement. We will yeah. be we will, as as the one million together will create more than a thousand trillion dollars worth of wealth on the continent. Right. Right. Yeah. So for you to believe that you can actually do it, you have to see other people like yourself. And so uh, Veronica is a brilliant, you know, young entrepreneur who takes initiative. Is not afraid to go and you know fight for herself. Right. And that's what we need to show. Right. That's Sorry, I'm being told that we have to end it. Sorry, we have run out of time. Uh, uh, we'll have to end it because we are running on a schedule. But thank, uh, you. Uh, thank you so much. I'd love if you come again, uh, both of you, Veronica and Amadou. But just quickly, where can people access you faster, faster in, in three seconds each if they want to? Oh, on Facebook, Veronica Kola. Or on LinkedIn, Veronica Kola. All right. Yeah. Mr. Amadou? Amadou Chico. Uh, you can search for M slash Preneur Africa on Facebook. All right. You'll find us there and we'll be happy to connect with you. All right. I appreciate your time, guys. Uh, sorry, we are out of time. We are running on a schedule and I can't go over it. Thank you. And on Thank that you. note, I think we'll put a full stop to it right now. We have been talking about matters, financial literacy and wealth. And I think we'll have more time to actually extend this conversation so that you can get a little more insight. But I believe you've learned something. Two, three, four, five hacks here and there that will help your life when it comes to matters financial literacy and uh, creating wealth. And I love the fact that, you know, he's not Kenyan, but he's in Kenya, giving you such lessons, okay, right here on Why in the Morning. Thank you so much for hanging out with us.